Okay, in uh, this video, we're going to look at what's called the Falk theorem for infinitely repeated games. So if we consider a, um, a version of the prisoner's dilemma, uh, as an example, um, but in, in the case where we're trying to maximize payoffs, so obviously it's, a, it's equivalent, so we have 2, 2, um, 0, 3, 3, 0, and 1. One, and if we wanted to repeat this an infinite amount of time, uh, the way, um, uh, sorry, repeatedly play this game, uh, the way we could do that is to consider um, multiplying the utilities by um, a delta, and we just interpret that delta as uh, the probability of game um, uh, continuing. Once we've done that, we can define, sorry, well, we can write down what we expect to be the length of the game. So the, the expected length of the game will then just be 1 over 1 minus delta using some very basic probability. Um, and once we've done that, we can get the mean uh, payoff uh, per stage game. So that way that allows us to get a single number that will allow us to uh, calculate everything. So that, that mean payoff is just going to be 1 minus delta uh, times the utility to player i when they're playing given strategy R and S, where these strategies are things like uh, alternate uh, playing the first and the second strategy, um, or play the first strategy until your opponent plays a second and then play the first throughout. So this this important little um, thing, and we want to remember that, and um, it, it just is the um, mean payoff, payoff uh, per stage. So what, what becomes interesting is um, how uh, and whether or not there exists a subgame Nash that, that allows us to be in a, in a good place. So we need to define one by a, a good place. And we can take our pairs of our game and draw them as a polygon because now uh, what we're looking at is the, the mean payoff per stage. So we know that the mean payoff per stage will live in, in this um, polygon looks something uh, like oh, let me uh, let me do that a bit better um, if we have the point zero three and the point three zero and if we have the point one one and two two and remember we're we're trying to maximize then what we have is this region here those are meant to be uh, perpendicular lines uh, to the axis, this region here where um, everything is better than the stage Nash, yeah, for both players. 1-1 one, one is the stage Nash in our, in our game, and so we call this region the um, individually rational, rational payoffs. Okay, um, so is there a Nash equilibrium for our game that will give us a particular, uh, a particular individual rational payoff? So, for example, let's call this uh, particular point here. Particular point here. Um, v1 v2. Now the stage Nash, okay, is, is going to be referred to as u1 star u2 star because they are a pairs of best responses. And so is there a, a way that we can get here? Okay, we'll say, we'll use as the notation that sigma1 bar, sigma2 bar give us this one particular uh, rational payoff, individual rational payoff, and we'll let um, sigma1 star, 
sigma one star, sigma two star, be the payoffs that that give uh, the Nash. Okay, so um, sorry, the Nash payoff. So sigma one star, sigma two star are the stage Nash equilibria, and sigma one bar, sigma two bar, are pairs of strategies that give us some uh, individually rational payoff. And so there's this theorem that states that um, if we have this, and if we have this, then there exists a um, delta bar such that for all delta, um, for all delta bigger than that delta bar, um, uh, there exists a subgame perfect. Uh, Nash equilibria uh, that gives the payoffs v1, v2. Okay, and this is the theorem where we'll try and uh, prove. Well, we are going to prove uh, now, all but briefly. Um, I'm missing bits, right? The, the, the actual definition of the, the theorem, you want to take a look at the notes. Um, it's missing some things here, uh, but Let's see how we can prove that. And we consider the strategy. Begin by playing sigma i bar. Remember, this was a strategy that gave us the uh, rationally, individually rational payoffs. Um, and as long as everyone plays that, carry on. If any player deviates, um, use sigma i star, so the Nash equilibrium, sorry, the stage Nash um, strategy for all future stages. So now what we want to do is just do a little bit of basic arithmetic. So let me just go back to this picture. So what we're saying is start off by playing um, sigma one bar, sigma two bar, so that we are um, at this point here. You know, this is getting a bit messy now. Um, if anyone at any point deviates, deviates, then just move, move to here. So is there any point for deviation? Question mark there. Is there any point to um, deviate? All right, that's what we're now going to check. So if both players are playing that, it's any player wanting to deviate. Um, if player one deviates, so without loss of generality, consider player one. So uh, player one deviates. Then their utility uh, will be this. So their utility, if they deviate, sorry, at stage k, then the utility to player 1, uh, deviating at stage k, will be simply going from the start to uh, the stage just before they deviate. We discount and they get v1, which is just the individually rational payoff. Then for that one um, stage, they'll get the utility at their deviation. So sigma one dash sigma two uh, bar. And then throughout, for the rest of this, the, the defection will have occurred, so to speak. And so they get the Nash equilibria times how many stages there are left. So to make this simple, um, I could obviously calculate this expression here. But what I'm saying is, it's well, I know it's the infinite sum uh, minus the, the discounting that's already occurred. That's just the simplest way to deal with that. Now, what we're going to assume is that this deviation here to this um, utility is bigger than the utility they would have had otherwise. So in other words, this has got to be bigger than V1. Okay, uh, because remember, 
we're trying to get to this point v1 um, here this point v1 here so at some point player one is going well actually I want to I want to do better and so he, he or she is deviated so it makes sense that that number be bigger than v1 Now, if um, we were to look at this, because of discounting, the only deviation, the, the deviation that makes the most sense is to deviate in first row. So uh, let's make a note of that. Deviate in first stage makes most sense. Right? Um, so we're just going to consider that and so we can write down the utility of deviating in the first stage is going to be that one shot deviation which is uh, this and this is the thing that we've assumed is bigger than v1 uh, plus from then onwards um, getting this uh, stage Nash payoff uh, discounted in the appropriate way this is just some basic algebra okay um, that kind of goes down to that when when k is uh, 1 okay it's pretty pretty straightforward now we want to know when our original strategy is Nash equilibrium we want to know when deviation doesn't make sense um, so deviation doesn't make sense when the utility of player 1 at Sigma 1 tilde Sigma 2 uh, Sigma 1 dash Sigma 2 bar uh, plus the utility of uh, the stage Nash is going to be less than or equal to V1, which is this individual rationally payoff um, discounted appropriately. Yeah, so if this holds, if this, then any, oops, sorry, let me write that there, then any. Okay, so we want to see the conditions on uh, delta. Um, for which this holds. Oh, and I've forgotten this, of course. Uh, so we want to see the conditions on delta for which this holds. Okay? So now we can just carry a very basic algebra and uh, simplify that to this, 1 minus delta, u1, sigma 1 dash, sigma 2 bar, just multiplying 1 minus delta out, uh, plus u1 star times delta um, has got to be less than or equal to v1 and then we can just carry on a little bit that's going to be u1 times sigma1 dash sigma2 bar minus v1 has got to be less than or equal to delta times u1 sigma1 dash sigma2 bar minus u1 star okay um, Now this right hand side here, this bracket here, is greater or equal to zero. Because again, we've assumed that the deviation we make um, has to be uh, instantaneously advantageous to player one. So this is greater or equal to zero, and we also know that, that, uh, that this is also greater or equal to v1, okay? So because that's greater or equal to zero, we can divide and keep the sign the same and we're pretty much done now because we basically found a delta that has the required um, result okay so if we say um, n e as long as delta greater or equal to delta bar um, where delta bar is equal to u1 sigma1 dash sigma2 bar minus v1 over u1 sigma1 uh, dash sigma2 bar minus u1 uh, star. Now, the thing that we know is that this is bigger than this 
because it's an individual rational payoff. So we can immediately write down that this is less uh, than one and also um, bigger than zero because of the fact that these are of the same sign based on what I said before. And that more or less proves our result because we have found a delta that as long as we're bigger than that delta, we're fine. The final part of this proof is just to check subgame perfection. Um, well, the final part would be just to note that the same holds for player two. Nothing we have done um, is particular for player two. And we just need to be a bit careful with the delta bars and the u1 and the u2. And we'd need to take the max of the equivalent expression for delta two, sorry, for player two. Um, and that gives us a, a Nash equilibria. So we know it's a Nash equilibria. Is it subgame perfect? Well, the construction of this proof did not actually take into account the first round, or any round, uh, or indeed the history of the play. And so in fact, just by construction, this is also, also subgame perfect. If, um, if both players um, have just deviated, then they will, they will flip to the, 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 the punishing uh, strategy, and if there's no deviation, they will continue. And the way to think about this is that really we have this delta, and um, if we said, okay, we want to look at the kth subgame, then we can just replace everything we've done with a, with a delta uh, to the k and multiply it all, all above everything we've done by that, and it would still hold. So that's a very neat uh, theorem. It says that in this sort of repeated game, as long as the probability of the game continuing is high enough, um, then we can always find uh, a strategy that... Um, uh, that is subgame perfect.